Okay, at this time, I ask that all panelists please turn all electronic devices to vibrate. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, and welcome to the stated meeting of September 23rd, 2020. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Would you please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, and justice, justice for all. Thank you. We'll begin now with roll call. Adams. I'm present. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Barron. Uh, blessed, unbossed, and present. Thank you. Borelli. Here. Thank you. Brannon. I'm here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Present. Cohen. Uh, I'm at home, but I'm definitely present. Constantinides. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Present. Drum. Here. Eugene. Gibson. Present. Jonai. Present. Gredenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lansman. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Present. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Present. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Present. Perkins. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Present. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Alone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Matteo. Here. 
Cumbo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. Thank you so much. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by the very Reverend Father George Anastasio, the spiritual leader of the Holy Cross Greek Orthodox Church in Whitestone, Queens. Brothers and sisters, let us bow our heads, mindful that we are always in the presence of Almighty God, Heavenly King, Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, the bestower of every blessing, both heavenly and earthly. We humbly bow our heads in awe of your magnificent glory. We humbly bow our hearts, most thankful that you have brought us together as a family. Dear Lord, we ask that you bless, enlighten, and guide the hearts, minds, and deliberations of our speaker and all the members of this city council as they work diligently for the welfare of New York City, most especially during this unprecedented pandemic. Bestow upon them resources to heal and to help. We ask and place this prayer in your holy, majestic, and eternal name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank I'd now you. like Thank to ask. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your powerful and important words at this time. I'd now ask Council Member Vallone to spread the invocation onto the record. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I'd like to make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you so much, Council Member Vallone. We will now have the adoption of minutes. Well, if I could just say quickly, sorry, Madam Majority. Oh, of course. Leader. A few words about my brother, Father Yorgos Anastasiou. Father George um, is beloved by so many in Queens. He graduated from JFK High School in the Bronx and studied at City College of New York and the Higher Ecclesiastical School of Athens. Upon returning from Greece, he attended the Hellenic College Holy Cross, continued at St. Vladimir's Seminary and Fordham University. Go Rams. From 2001 to 2004, he worked as a public school teacher of history and social sciences for the New York City Department of Education. He was ordained in 2004 and served in the Cathedral of St. Demetrius of Astoria, or as everybody in Astoria says, St. D's, and he was appointed the Parish of Transfiguration of Christ and Corona. And in September 2019, he became the spiritual leader of our beloved Holy Cross Greek Orthodox Church here in Whitestone. Father George is a graduate of the NYPD and FBI Citizens Academies and works for the NYC Police Department as their chaplain since 2014. He also serves as chaplain to the MTA Police Department, TBTA Police Department, and the New York State Fraternal Order of Police. His love of the church and his faith is clearly seen in his love for his family. He's married to Presbyteria Aliki Anastasio and they have three beautiful children. I can proudly say that Father Joan George is known for his warm smile compassion, zest for life, and even though he won't admit it, his wonderful baritone voice. He is a great communicator. He keeps his congregation involved, engaged, and fully part of their community. He is deeply loved by his parishioners from Astoria to Corona, and we're very lucky to have him now in Whitestone. At Fedesto, and thank you, my brother, for giving your blessing over this council, our staff, our families, and my friends on this beautiful fall. Thank you, Madam Majority. Thank you so much, Council Member Vallone, and for giving us the full breadth and weight of the well-roundedness of Father George. We thank you so much for being with us here in the Council, and we hope to be able to visit you soon. I would now, at this time, we will now have the adoption of minutes. None. Messages and papers from the mayor. M252, Mayor's Management Report. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Wednesday and happy fall. It's now fall. I hope you and your families are safe and well. Uh, as you all know, our city is continuing to cope with the economic devastation of this pandemic, which we are still living through. We have made a lot of progress, but New Yorkers still need so much help right now. And that is why I'm proud that we have several bills today 
designed to better protect New Yorkers hurt by the pandemic. But first I want to acknowledge all those who have died as a result of the coronavirus. Nationally, we have surpassed 200,000 deaths from COVID-19. That includes 23,780 New Yorkers who have lost their lives as of yesterday. That's a staggering loss for our city and for our country. And although we are losing fewer New Yorkers to the virus than we did at the height of the pandemic, each death is still heartbreaking. On behalf of the council, and as always, I wanna send our deepest condolences to the families and loved ones who have lost someone during this painful time. I also wanna take a moment to acknowledge a 9-11 related deaths since we last met. Renee Sanchez, who was an EMS worker uh, with the FDNY, died this month. Our condolences go out to his family. I would be remiss not to remember one of the most tremendous losses for our country this year. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a tireless champion for the rights of women, the LGBTQ community, and countless others, the marginalized, the vulnerable, she died on Friday. We lost our hero on Friday during a period in history when it feels like there are so few of them and we are at a time of grieving during a year when we have already lost so much, but we must continue her fight for justice. To honor the legacy of Justice Ginsburg, the council's women's caucus is wearing blue today. She had a steadfast dedication to justice and was committed to lifting up the voice of those who felt powerless. We must do the same, each of us in our own way. Justice Ginsburg made New York proud, her hometown, her home borough of Brooklyn proud, and now we must make her proud. I wanna thank you, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, for everything you've done to make our country a better place, especially for women. I want us to take a moment now, a moment of silence for those New Yorkers that we've lost to this virus, uh, the EMS, worker Renee Sanchez and Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Thank you. This Sunday evening, September 27th is the beginning of Yom Kippur. To those who will be observing, may you have an easy and meaningful fast. And now onto our agenda. We'll be voting on the following finance items. Introduction 2039A, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, at the request of the mayor, will extend the deadline to file an initial or renewal application from March 16, 2020 to July 15, 2020, for various property tax exemption or abatement programs. According to the Department of Finance, approximately 2,650 eligible initial and renewal applications were received after the existing deadline, but prior to July 15, 2020. This legislation will permit the approval of these applications this year, rather than requiring the homeowners to wait until next tax year to qualify for benefits. Introduction 1225A, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum will require the Department of Finance to make best efforts to collect and maintain telephone and email contact information for every property owner in the city to allow the department to do improved and more efficient outreach. Currently, the department does not have a systematic way of collecting and maintaining contact information other than a physical mailing address for property owners. However, email and telephone information are crucial for improved and more efficient outreach and communication. And this legislation encourages DOF to ensure that emphasis is also placed on those alternative and often preferred means of contact. Introduction 1702A, sponsored by Councilmember Karen Kozlowitz, will require the Department of Finance to include notice on July 1st property tax bills that use a prior year's tax rate to calculate the amount of tax owed and the taxes that are due subject to adjustment upon the adoption of the tax rate for the new fiscal year. Tax rates for the new fiscal year are typically adopted after the preparation and mailing of the July 1st tax bills 
And this notification is intended to clear up confusion about why taxpayers may see a mid-year adjustment on a subsequent tax bill. Introduction 1705A, sponsored by Minority Leader Steve Matteo, will require the Department of Finance to establish and maintain a system to contact property owners by email and provide access electronically to a receipt for and information on each payment made for the charges shown on their statement of account. And I wanna thank the staff who worked in these bills, Rebecca Chasen, Emeria Dev, Stephanie Ruiz, Noah Brick, uh, Andrew Wilbur, and Luke uh, Zangerly. The final finance item is the termination of an Article 5 property tax exemption that the council granted in 2007 to two developments called Albany Crossing and Kingston Heights in Councilmember Cornegie's district. The properties wish to reorganize as an HDFC and seek a different as of right property tax exemption to preserve 224 units of rental housing. And I wanna thank Noah Brick for his work on that. In addition, the council will be voting on the following legislative items. Introduction 2032A, sponsored by Councilmember Andy Cohen, by request of the mayor will align New York City's paid sick law with the recently enacted New York state law, including how time is accrued and which businesses are covered. And from the staff, I wanna thank Balkis Mirig. The next bill is an effort to provide displaced hotel workers with protections. Introduction 2049A, sponsored by Councilor Mark Levine, will establish protections for displaced hotel service workers in the event of a change in control of a hotel such as a sale or bankruptcy. Once new ownership commences, the owner will be required to provide employment to the existing hotel workers for at least 90 days. During this retention period, existing workers would be paid the same wage rate or higher. And at the end of the 90 day period, the employer would perform a written evaluation of each worker. And if the worker receives a satisfactory result, the new employer must offer them continued employment. Additionally, this legislation will require hotels to notify guests of service disruptions that would substantially affect their stay. A hotel would be prohibited from charging a fee or penalty for cancellations made because of a service disruption. The displaced worker protections would take effect immediately and the provisions related to service disruptions would take effect in 120 days. And I wanna thank from the staff, Leah Skirpiak and Balkis Mearing. Our final bill is in response to the ongoing impact of the pandemic. The pandemic has devastated the finances of so many of our local businesses and they need our support more than ever. We will be extending previously enacted legislation that temporarily suspends personal liability provisions in the leases of certain COVID impacted businesses. Introduction 2083A, co-sponsored by Councilmember Rivera and myself, would extend the time frame of our existing legislation, which is set to expire on September 30th and move that date to March 31st, 2021. Personal liability provisions are provisions that hold a business owner personally liable in the event they are unable to pay rent. And this is common for small business leases. In order to prevent the seizure of personal assets or property, an owner must turn in the keys to the property, effectively ending their lease. In addition to extending our legislation, this legislation would also require the city to conduct outreach to commercial tenants regarding protections created in the bill. And from the staff, I wanna thank Stephanie Jones, Noah Mexler, and Chris Sartori. That is our agenda today. And I now turn it back to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move into the discussion of general orders. We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members registered to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader, council member uh, Ulrich has raised his hand, as has Councilmember Cabrera. Okay, we will begin with Councilmember Ulrich. Time starts now. I'm sorry, Madam Majority Leader, can you hear me? Yes, I can. 
Sorry. Um, is this discussion on general orders? This is general orders, yes. Okay. Um, I'll reserve my comments for the actual vote then. I don't, I don't want to uh, take away time from this. Thank you. We'll be anxiously awaiting. Thank you. Councilmember Cabrera. Time starts now. Uh, actually, uh, I'm going to. I'll speak uh, during discussion time. Thank you so much. If you could just add me to the list. Thank you. We will add you to the list, and we also will be anxiously awaiting your response. Are there any other members, Mr. Parliamentarian, requesting to speak at this time? No, there are not, Madam Majority Leader. Okay. Then we will move into the report of special committees. None. Sorry, people have to mute themselves. Thank you. Say that again, Madam Majority Leader. Report of special committees. There are none, Madam Majority Leader. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, Intro 2032A, Employee Safe and Sick Time. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 2049A, Hotel Service Disruptions. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Intros 1225A and 1702A, Property Tax Rates and Owner Information. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1705A, Department of Finance Payment Receipts. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 2039A, Tax Abatement and Exemption Program Deadlines. Amended and coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 1433, Transparency Resolution. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LUs 686 and Reso 1437 and LU 687 and Reso 1438, Tax Exemptions. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Small Business, Intro 2083A, Commercial Tenant Personal Guarantee Protection. Amended and coupled on general orders. And I would ask the clerk to take a roll call vote on all of the items coupled on today's general orders calendar. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Adams. I vote aye. I'm Bree Samuel. I vote aye. Ayala. I vote aye. Baron. I vote aye. Borelli. I vote aye on all except intros 2032A, 2049A, 2083A. I thank you very much. Thank you. Brannon. I vote aye. Cabrera. I vote aye. Chin. Uh, I have to disclose that my husband is a teacher with the Department of Education, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Cohen. Uh, Mr. Clerk, were there any land use call ups? No, sir. Okay, well then I'm gonna vote aye on all general orders. Sounds good, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Clerk. Yes. Can we please call on council member Amprey Samuel before moving on to the next council member? Absolutely, council member Amprey Samuel. Apologies, I meant to disclose on the record that um, my brother is a teacher at the Department of Education, and today we are voting on a um, transparency reso um, in relationship to the Department of Education. So I just wanted to disclose that on the record. Thank you. Thank you. Carnegie. Listen to explain. Go ahead, Rob. Uh, as we await the uh, verdict on uh, or the decision on the Breonna Taylor case, I ask for peace and some type of tranquility and some leadership. Um, I don't know what the ultimate result will be, but it will certainly reverberate around the country and land in New York. I vote aye on all. Thank you. 
Deutsch. Uh, no on 2083. I in the rest. Diaz. Yes or no? Thank you, sir. Drum. Aye. Eugene. Agora I. Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. Good afternoon, colleagues. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, Speaker, all of my colleagues and those who are watching us today. I am voting aye on all items on today's agenda. I echo the sentiments expressed by Council Member Robert Cornegie regarding the Brianna Taylor case. <coughs> um, and certainly we continue to lift up the family of Brianna who continue to cry out for justice for the loss of their loved one. Uh, last Friday, our nation learned the tragic news that civil rights icon and legend Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away at the tender age of 87. For over 27 years, she served on the Supreme Court as a titan for justice and equality, presiding over cases that limited environmental pollution, legalized same-sex marriage, ensured workplace protection for LGBTQ Americans, and guaranteed equal access to education for women and women's health care. As one of a few women to serve on the Supreme Court, Justice Ginsburg has been a role model for young girls across the country. Her legacy will forever be cemented in our history as an advocate for women's rights, gender equality, and guaranteeing protections for many marginalized communities. We will never forget her dedication to her work and commitment to public service. Just this past Monday, I joined with my colleagues and members of the Bronx Judiciary to provide a Bronx salute in her honor, although we know she's a daughter of Brooklyn, but the Bronx wants to salute her for a job well done. Uh, today at our stated meeting, I join with our Women's Caucus co-chair, Councilmember Farrah Lewis, and all the women in the Women's Caucus in wearing blue, her favorite color, in solidarity. May her legacy serve as a beacon of hope and opportunity for the next generation of leaders. May she rest in power for a job well done. The Honorable Notorious RBG. With that, I vote aye on all items on today's agenda. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Gibson. Joan, I. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. I just want to echo the sentiments of Councilmember Cornegie and Gibson. And I got the memo, as you can see by the blue shirt. Uh, before I vote, for the record, I'd like to make the following disclosures. My wife is a school nurse in the Department of Ed Public School, PS 175. My sister is an administrator within the Department of Education. My son may enroll as a student at CUNY. And my brother owns property related to a New York public library. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Gordon Chick. Uh, I have nothing to disclose today because I believe my son has actually graduated Queens College, although I am waiting to see the diploma. Um, with that, uh, Madam Majority Leader, I vote aye and all, and I join my colleagues in mourning the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I will share with you just a very small story. My mother-in-law and uh, the Honorable Ruth Bader Ginsburg came from the same part of the world, Brooklyn, New York and they were virtually the same age. And when she went to the Supreme Court, when she was nominated, my mother-in-law cried because it was as if she was going to the Supreme Court. So when people think that diversity doesn't matter, when inclusion doesn't matter, they are dead wrong. We need to have a judiciary and all levels of government that are as diverse as our nation is today. And so with that, I say, may her memory be for a blessing always. And with that, Madam Majority Leader, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Holden. Uh, before I vote, I want to dis disclose that my son is an adjunct lecturer at CUNY, of which this council funds. That said, I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 2049A and 2032A, which I vote no. Thank you.
Thank you. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Without Ruth Bader Ginsburg, there would be no protections for sex discrimination under law and all the great work that she did. And even to this day, uh, the 14th Amendment only protects uh, discrimination in sex where there is no important governmental objective, which is known as intermediate standard of review. And so uh, I, I mourn the loss of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I think I got to meet her when I went to the Supreme Court at high school at Bronx Science for a field trip. And uh, I just hope we can pass a uh, equal rights amendment uh, to give women strict scrutiny in her honor and, and so much more. I vote aye on all. Thank you. King, oh, excuse me, Council Member King. For the record, I'd like to disclose my daughter um, is a teacher at the Department of Education. I vote aye on all and rest in peace, Judge Ginsburg. Council Member Koo. I vote aye. Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. I vote aye. Levin. I vote aye. Levine. Uh, yes, I will be voting aye, but I need to disclose that my son is a student at City University of New York, uh, which is uh, allocated funding in today's transparency right now. And again, voting aye on all. Thank you. Lewis. I vote aye on all, but I would like to disclose on the record that CUNY is being funded in the reso and my sister's employed by CUNY and I would like to echo the sentiments of my colleagues regarding Brianna Taylor's killers and hope that she gets real justice. Thank you. Maizel. Yes. Menchaca. I just want to briefly say that um, I'm really help, uh, thankful that Brianna Taylor and Ruth Bader Ginsburg are names that we're talking about here in this council and that they continue to shine um, a light towards the justice that uh, both they served um, Supreme Court and the justice that Brianna and her family deserve. I vote aye on all. Miller. I vote aye on all with the exceptions of 249A and 2032A for which I would be abstaining. Thank you. Moya. I vote aye. Perkins. You're muted, Council Member Perkins. This, this, why was this muted? We hear you now. You hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay. So I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Powers. Aye. Thank you. Reynoso. No. Council Member Reynoso, yes. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Richards. Aye on all. Rivera. Thanks everyone for their support for the small business legislation and for all their kind words about extraordinary women. I vote aye. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. And I'm proud of the, all the bills that we bought in today, including the one for that will bring more support to the local small businesses, even though I continue to believe that the solution to protect the small businesses to pass the Small Business Just Survival Act, but at least the one that we passed today is advancing in the right direction. With that, I vote aye. Thank you. Mr. Clerk. Yes. Before our next council member, council member Barron wishes to make a statement about her vote on the record. Yes, council member Barron. 
Yes, thank you. I would like to disclose on the record that CUNY is funded in this resolutions today and my son is affiliated with CUNY. Thank you. Thank you. Rose. Permission to explain my vote. I vote Thank, I'm you. Now. Thank you. I vote aye on all and I want to disclose for the record that the Department of Sanitation is in this reso and my son is an employee and um, we mourn the devastating loss of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a champion for women's rights. She fought through tremendous barriers, became an iconic and notorious member of Supreme Court and paved the way for generations of women. We owe it to her legacy to preserve the fundamental human rights that she so tirelessly fought for. Justice Ginsburg once said, fight for the things that you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. So we must join together as a nation to honor Justice Ginsburg's legacy and continue our pursuit of justice and equality. And I, I think this is so fitting in light of the, uh, the recent report of the outcome of the Breonna Taylor uh, case. And um, I just want to say justice delayed is justice denied. And um, I hope that in the spirit of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, this justice will be accomplished in the Breonna Taylor case. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Miller, can I ask you for a clarification? Yeah, Billy. My, my apologies on, uh, on the two items you are abstaining. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Thank you, kind sir. Council Member Rosenthal. I vote aye on all, and I, I couldn't say it better than Council Member Rose. So I just want to attach my name to her statement. That was beautiful weaving together of both of these women's lives. Uh, thank you, Council Member. Thank you, Helen. Councilman Rosenthal. I vote aye on all. <laughs> Thank you. Salamanca. Torres. Aye on all. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. Uh, Majority Leader, uh, I first want to disclose on the record that the New York City Education Department is in today's uh, transparency resolution and my father is associated with, with the DOE. I, I also want to just uh, echo the words of my colleagues that uh, Brianna Taylor deserves and her family deserve justice and nothing short of justice. And um, with regards to Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, you know, from Madison High School in Brooklyn to the United States Supreme Court. Um, Justice Ginsburg uh, is a trailblazer in so many ways and her impact will be felt for generations. Um, trailblazer for women, for families. And I wanna note, you know, her family, uh, her family comes from Ukraine, just like my family and uh, came here to this country and came here and lived in Brooklyn, New York. So uh, may she rest in eternal power and may we continue the work to ensure that the words in the preamble of the constitution, we the people truly mean all the people because that was very much about her work and her legacy. And with that, I vote aye and all. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Traeger. Ulrich. Well, Madam Majority Leader, may be excused to explain my vote, please. Yes, you may. I'm okay, sorry. thank you so much. It's great to see everybody and to be back. I, I, I'm going to be voting aye on all with the exception of 2032A, 2049A, and 2083A. But I would like to speak to 2032A for just a moment if I can. Um, I know that earlier I said that I was going to speak during the vote. Um, I'm very disturbed about the fact that the city council is going to allow uh, the finance department to charge a 7.5% late payment 
um, fee or assessment on property taxes that are going to be made late by landlords in New York City. I know that the city has to raise, raise revenue, but the fact that so many tenants are unable to pay their rent, and as a result, landlords are not receiving the same amount of income, and now we're charging them a 7.5% um, surcharge or interest rate, whatever you want to call it, I'm calling it a tax, I think is really, really despicable. It's a slap in the face to the folks who pay for the services and the salaries and the things that we're trying to preserve in the budget, not only this fiscal year, but next fiscal year. And the fact that we let the mayor get away with it, I think is really disgraceful. So, you know, landlords are hurting, tenants are hurting, everyone is hurting during the COVID crisis. The fact that we're gonna allow the city to tack on a 7.5% interest rate for people who are unable to make their property taxes on time because their tenants are not able to pay their rents because they're out of work, it's really not fair. So I'm voting no on 2032A for that reason. And I'm hoping that maybe later on the city council can bring this up at a, at a finance committee hearing or some other uh, opportunity because it's not fair. Everyone's hurting during COVID. We have to try to alleviate the pain and suffering that people are experiencing right now due to the economy and what's going on in the world and in our country. And, um, and for that reason, I'm gonna be voting no on that as well as the other two items, but I'll be voting aye on all others. And I want to thank you uh, for your, uh, the time. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Ulrich. Valone. Thank you. I'd like to disclose for the record that the New York Junior Tennis League is in today's resolution, and my father and brother are involved with that entity. Uh, with that, I vote aye on all, with the exception of 2032A. And just a couple of words, I guess, coming up on my 30th. Can't believe it. Anniversary as a lawyer, uh, the passing of the Honorable Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I have to tell you, she set a standard of excellence and professionalism that when you were in law school and then as you became a lawyer, you you tried but never could meet what she did, and it and it drove you to be the best you could be as a person and as a lawyer. So we keep her in our prayers but we keep her, her memory alive by continuing to be the best we can be as, as legislators, as educators, as lawyers, as every walk of life. So with that, thank you to everyone for their beautiful words and um, have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. Ben Bramer. With great gratitude to Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg who helped allow me to even have the right to be married to the man that I love. Uh, I vote yes and all. Thank you. Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, to, to my colleagues and to all New Yorkers, uh, uh, my neighbors in my district and throughout the city, uh, Shana Tova, happy and a healthy new year. Uh, may the year 5781 uh, bring us uh, a far better place than the 5780 that we just left behind. Uh, and I thank the speaker for his uh, kind wishes as well for the upcoming holiday. Um, uh, I, I too would like to join my colleagues in recognizing the passing and the greatness of uh, Madam Justice Ginsburg. Uh, those who uh, had the, the time in life to read even one of her opinions understood uh, the way she weaved through traffic uh, of the facts uh, to, to get to her point is so Brooklyn of her, uh, but it also spoke to her brilliance in every way and uh, her struggle to become who she was, uh, the discrimination she faced as a young mother entering the workforce um, uh, as or better qualified than anyone else that, she, that applied for a job, uh, but simply because she had a young child, uh, she had to face those struggles is um, uh, perhaps something that we're not past today uh, and any strides that we've made in society uh, are owing to her, uh, but we're still not there. And uh, surely whatever we've come to as an American uh, nation today is owing uh, in many ways to her perseverance. Um, she was a resident, she grew up in my neighborhood uh, in Midwood in a district that I am now privileged to represent on East 9th Street in Midwood. Uh, uh, a neighbor, a beautiful neighborhood. Um, and I like to think, I hope, uh, that the place that she grew up uh, is, you know, in addition to the great mind that she had, 
maybe uh, was part of the foundation of who she became. Um, I was thinking the last couple of days of something I remembered from Justice Scalia's funeral uh, when she spoke. They were famously good friends. And um, I'll, I'll almost conclude and then I'll vote, uh, Madam President, if I have, may have an extra minute. Um, she, she said uh, uh, that, you know, in speaking about Justice Scalia, she said he, he once was asked how we could be friends. I'm reading the quote. Uh, given our disagreements on lots of things, she said, Justice Scalia answered, I attack ideas. I don't attack people. Some very good people have some very bad ideas. Uh, I like to think that the two of them and their brilliant, amazing uh, friendship uh, can, can guide a lot of us uh, here in New York City and throughout the nation on how we relate to each other on political matters and on all matters. Um, and with that, I would will pass my vote. I will explain why I'm voting no on intro 2083 for the same reason I voted no on intro 1932 a number of months ago. I believe firmly that it violates Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution, prohibiting government impairment of the obligation of contracts. I understand there are those who have a different opinion. This is my opinion, and for that reason, I vote no on 2083. I vote aye on all the rest. A happy and a healthy and wonderful New Year to all. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Mr. Clerk. Yes. There are several council members who would like to be recognized, starting with Council Member Levin. Council Member Levin. Thank you. I'd just like to disclose on the record that CUNY is funded in this transparency resolution, and my wife is a student at the Grad Center of CUNY. Thank you. Mr. Clerk. Matteo. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Yes. There, there are two more. Uh, Council okay. Member Cabrera. Council Member Cabrera. I'm sorry. I raised my hand for uh, the discussion part. Okay, we've got we've got you on the list. No problem. <laughs> and then finally, Mr. Clerk, Council Member Salamanca. Sure, Council Member Salamanca. Thank you. I would like to vote aye on all. Council Member, do you have any um, disclosures to make for the record? Um, actually, yeah. For the record, just want to disclose that uh, my wife is uh, employed by New York City. Uh, parks um, and um, and we're funding um, New York City Parks Department. Thank you, Council Member Constantinidis. Yes, I'd like to vote aye on all land use call-ups and all matters in the general order of calendar today, with permission. Permission granted. Thank you. Matteo. I'm voting no on 2032, no on 2049, and no on 2083, and I and the rest. Combo. I vote aye on all. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. Excuse me. All items say general order calendar have a vote of 50 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exceptions of the following. Introduction 2032A has 44 in the affirmative, 5 in the negative, 1 abstention. Introduction 2049A has 45 in the affirmative, 4 in the negative, 1 abstention. And introduction 2083A has 45 in the affirmative, five in the negative and no abstentions. And there are no land use calls. Thank you. The items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. We'll now move into introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so we will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. 
Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, there are several, but the first three are council members Lewis, Holden, and Barron. Okay, we will begin with council member Lewis. Please wait for the time clock to begin. Time starts now. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Speaker Johnson and Majority Leader Cumbo for the opportunity to briefly honor one of the greatest women of our time, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. District 45 born and raised, Justice Ginsburg will forever be remembered as a shining beacon of freedom and liberty, a groundbreaking lawyer and judge. Justice Ginsburg experienced firsthand struggles that women faced in a sexist and misogynistic society. As the second female member of the Supreme Court, Justice Ginsburg worked tirelessly to support women's rights, civil rights, and reproductive rights while locked in a battle with cancer five times to which she finally succumbed. She will be memorialized as a woman of heroic strength, determination, and resilience. Her life's work is inspirational for women and girls who will push past the naysayers, proving that their gender is not a weakness, but rather a, a strength that surpasses all understanding. And while President Trump and the Republican Senate historically intend to fill her vacant seat with another woman, despite her dying wishes, we are all acutely aware of the, of the threat this potential appointee poses to women's rights and gender equality. The historic decisions that have for so long been under attack, which have already been eroded into non-existent are at risk. We are looking at an entire generation of men and women who are hell bent on stripping women across America of our freedoms and our dignity. We are once again in a life and, and death struggle for women's rights. As a co-chair of the Women's Council's Women's Caucus, Women's Caucus I, am great, I am grateful to witness and be a direct beneficiary of Justice Ginsburg's groundbreaking work to protect and expand women and reproductive rights. Alongside my fellow women in the council and my co-chair Vanessa Gibson um, and elsewhere in the world, we will continue to carry the mantle in the fight for gender equality and we cannot allow our fundamental freedoms to be taken away. Once again, thank you Majority Leader for the opportunity to speak and to represent Justice Ginsburg. Thank you. Thank you. We will now hear from Council Member Holden, followed by Council Member Barron. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. In light of this week's ruling by the Manhattan Supreme Court barring construction from moving forward on the proposed jail in Chinatown, I would like to call on the Criminal Justice Committee to hold a hearing on my bill, Intro 940, which would create a commission to study the cost of renovating Rikers Island. Uh, despite being introduced in May of 2018 and being co-sponsored by seven of our colleagues, this bill has never been considered by the committee. Bearing in mind the enormous cost of building four new jails in four boroughs to replace the facilities on Rikers, as well as the current fiscal crisis our city is experiencing as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is incumbent on the committee to practice due diligence. If Rikers Island can be rebuilt into a more modern, humane, and productive correctional facility uh, while also saving our city billions of dollars, uh, this is an option that we, that we must consider. Uh, the city suffered a $9 billion revenue shortfall this fiscal year and will probably face another shortfall next year. Uh, the plan to close Rikers Island is projected to cost upwards, and, and again, it's probably more than $8 billion, and it will likely cost more in the, in the out years. So community boards across the city have made it clear that our constituents do not want new jails built in their neighborhoods. Activists on both sides of the political spectrum have told us that building more jails is not the answer to the problems in our criminal justice system. Uh, more lawsuits are clearly going to result from this recent court ruling, costing the city even more money as it fights these lawsuit, lawsuits. It is our duty to represent the city residents who elected us by analyzing every possibility in the debate over closing Rikers. I ask my colleagues to sign on to this bill and support a hearing on it. Uh, it gives us more information, folks. Let's just um, get the information. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. 
Thank you. We will now hear from Council Member Barron. Time starts now. Uh, thank you very much. Just very briefly, I just want to make comment of the fact that yes, we're beginning to see the beginning of the, we're starting to see what will be the beginning of the system that will look at the actions of those officers who killed Breonna Taylor. And I'm saying that this is a system that has not in many instances, if any at all, ever gotten us justice in terms of wanton acts of police officers who unjustifiably kill people. So I just ask that we stay vigilant, stay on top of what's happening and support the family in their call that the criminal justice system bring justice for Breonna Taylor. And just briefly to my colleague, council member Menchaca, I want to congratulate you and those advocates who are fighting to make sure that any development that comes into your community is in fact something that the community wants and is beneficial and is not swayed by the suggestion that they are bringing in jobs and that that's a cover to allow any other kinds of disruption and uh, discrimination and, and uh, attempts at bringing in another element and displacing the people who are there. So we are commending you and congratulations to you and the advocates for your victory at Industry City. Thank you. Parliamentarian, are there any other council members on the list that wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Kalos, King, Cabrera, and Menchaca. We'll start with council member Kalos. Time starts now. Today I'm introducing and co-sponsoring three bills to help small businesses. One will help restaurants in expediting their sidewalk cafe applications. The other will help small businesses more become more accessible to the 1 million plus residents and 7 million tourists, which I hope will be coming back with disabilities. And the last would extend outdoor dining. Outdoor dining has become a hallmark of New York City's pandemic resurgence for restaurants and nightlife. However, business faces bureaucratic hurdles to obtain and maintain their licenses to do so. Small businesses that are already struggling or new owners who may seek to fill an empty storefront must start an expensive, cumbersome, bureaucratic, and lengthy process to get a new sidewalk cafe permit, even when one pre was previously granted. Introduction 2096 would allow a sidewalk cafe permit that had been valid in the previous three years to be easily renewed or transferred temporarily for the business or a new owner provided the plans were the same. I wish I could take credit for this idea, but it came right from a small business owner as an example of a bureaucratic problem that seems stupid not to fix. I'd like to thank the New York Hospitality Alliance for their help and advocacy on this and other issues affecting small businesses. The blight of empty storefronts has only gotten worse since the pandemic and we need to do everything we can to help them retrofit for accessibility and public health to welcome more customers with disabilities while securing lower rents. Introduction 2097 will provide grants and low interest loans for up to $250,000 for small businesses and storefronts to make accessibility and public health improvements coupled with securing long saga after rent reductions from landlords. I'd like to thank co-sponsor Andrew Cohen, Victor Khaleesi, Commissioner of Mayor's Office of People with Disability and countless advocates for working with us on this program since I was elected. Together, we can open the best parts of our city to everyone. I'd also like you to please consider signing on to pre-considered legislation carried by Council Member Reynoso to extend outdoor dining as a permanent addition to our great city. As we mourn the loss of life of Breonna Taylor and countless black men and women uh, facing a justice system that is fundamentally broken. I am, wish to stand in solidarity and support the voices of this community and um, be there as we respond to the decision. And for those observing Yom Kippur, starting with Kol Nidri on Sunday night, Gemar Chatima Tova. Thank you, Council Member Kalos. We will now hear from Council Members, I'll say Cabrera and then Menchaca. Time starts now. Thank you so much, Majority Leader. The COVID-19 pandemic has- You forgot King. I'm sorry, Council Member King. I couldn't read my handwriting. <laughs> we'll come right back to you after Council Member Cabrera. My apologies. I no really problem. don't mind him going first. <laughs> okay, then we will switch over to Council Member King. My apologies. Thank you so much for your understanding, Council Member Cabrera. Thank you. Time starts now. Um, thank you again and congratulations to everyone who passed legislation today. Just want to highlight a few items. 
Um, first, I want to say uh, Happy New Year to all my Jewish brothers. Uh, we're in the caucus and in the council and, uh, and beyond. Also, I want to express my condolences to Councilmember Cabrera, to your mother-in-law and your family um, who's transitioned, and also your mother recently who's transitioned back home. Um, may, may the Lord continue to protect and watch over your families. Um, of course, to Ginsburg's family, um, may she rest in peace and in power for all the work that she's done. And I just want to touch base on, of course, today, um, intro 2098 for myself, Council 11, and CUA introducing. We know COVID-19 has did a lot to devastate businesses, um, but one of the entities that are in the city of New York is our MWBs who definitely got left out of, on the cold when there were a number of funding and grants that came down um, to the fact that even some of the big white corporations had, were embarrassed and we had to return some of stimulus money. So this bill will allow the administration the form of grant program that will ensure that when funding comes into the city of New York, that MWBs must be highlighted to make sure they're tapped into these funds, that they don't get excluded from any funding. We know our local barbers, we know our hardware stores, our nail salons, you know, our delicatessens, all these stores that make our community strong, uh, especially in the Black, Hispanic, and Asian communities, uh, suffered um, because they didn't have the proper capacity to have access to a number of these grants. So you all have the legislation. I'm asking you all to sign on to it, take a look at it, need your support and help to make sure that we protect our MWBs in the city of New York, as well as asking the state of New York to um, make their loan program, um, their, their loan program, turning it into a grant program. So you all will get that email. Those who've got the email, I'm asking for your support to sign on to this legislation. Um, and lastly, I just want to add two things. Um, we all get elected to represent neighborhoods and communities. I want to commend Carlos Manchaco for doing just that, representing his community, standing with uh, his neighbors. Give me just 30 more, 15 more seconds, Madam Majority Speaker, uh, okay, okay. leader, um, to make sure that we do what we have to do to represent the people each and every day who vote for us and stand with them. Thank you for standing strong, Carlos, and, and representing your district very well. And finally, call, um, Council Member Traeger, I want to thank him for his energy and his strength fighting for the Department of Education and our children each and every day. I ask all of us, if you haven't, to touch, touch the base with your principals as well to find out because this reset, these postponements, have caused chaos in the Department of Education and these conversations are not happening. A lot of principals are struggling because as we postpone, they, more kids are transitioning into staying at home and schools and principals are not able to deliver on remote learning. These conversations are not happening. I'm asking us all, if you haven't had these conversations, engage in these conversations. And if we need to have a total pause on the Department of Education until January, then let's do so and get remote learning together, get school systems in place. Because as, and I end with, as the, as the chancellor said, we are building the plane as we're riding in the plane. I'm asking them to put the plane down on the tarmac, fix the plane, then let's get our children and our educators in there you, so we can make sure our system works well for everybody. Thank you. Thank you again. Have a blessed weekend. Thank you, Council Member King. We're going to go to Council Member Cabrera and then Council Member Menchaca. Thank you, Mark Now, Thank you again, uh, Madam Majority Leader, and thank you, uh, Council Member King, uh, for your kind words regarding my mother-in-law, who's now with the Lord. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has devastated many businesses throughout the five boroughs, especially restaurants. Intro 2089 offers a lifeline to restaurants, particularly small establishing communities of color. A survey conducted by the New York City Hospitality Alliance revealed that the number, that the number, the number of restaurants that couldn't pay rent increased between June and July, even with outdoor dining, and almost 90% of restaurants couldn't pay the full rent by August. The New York State Restaurant Association found that two thirds of restaurants will likely close permanently by the end of the year and half of those by November without any relief. The impact on small restaurants and community of color, we serve a less wealthy customer base is even more devastating. Intro 2089, 2020 will make outdoor non sheer hookah temporarily available to help restaurants generate revenue. Let me be clear, it will be only single person hookah hook will be served and only in, in the outdoor areas, adhering to the practices that prevent the spread of COVID-19. I urge all of my colleagues to sign on, sign on in 
to Intro 2089 as co-sponsors and help our restaurants in our community. And let me uh, recognize and appreciate Councilmember Reynoso and Councilmember Rodriguez as co-prime uh, of this bill. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Cabrera. Councilmember Menchaca. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader and hermanos and hermanas. Uh, last night after Congress member Nida Velasquez released a letter with her colleagues and some state reps from Brooklyn, Industry City pulled their rezoning application in light of continued opposition from the community and local elected officials. Industry City attempted to use their money and influence to circumvent the community backed position of a no and win the support of this body. Money and influence have often been enough to successfully change land use policy in New York City. But like many communities before, Sunset Park said no. And it was clear that Industry City's plan would make tens of thousands of Sunset Park residents who were and are continuing to be impacted by COVID more vulnerable at a time of unprecedented economic instability. We tried to craft a solution with Industry City our neighbors and the city to turn their proposal into an equitable opportunity for everyone. But this failed. Saying no to a bad deal is a win. Yes, we are in a health and economic and affordability crisis. And these crisis, uh, these moments of crisis require, require urgent leadership, which is why I want to say to you, my colleagues and our neighbors who followed Industry City's lead or were reluctant to let an opportunity of jobs go. I heard you. And the end of this zoning application is the beginning of our work to deliver what New Yorkers want and deserve. Thoughtful, comprehensive planning led by our communities. Comprehensive planning means an equitable and resilient future, not piecemeal de developer driven rezonings. I want to thank my staff uh, and everybody on the on the ground, uh, especially my staff uh, who worked so many years on this. Uh, Tony Chirito, Cesar Vargas, Lorena Lucero, my chief of staff, Carlos Jesus Galsaldia, um, and most importantly, my, my land use guru, Rene, um, who many of you have met during this process. Um, they were so incredible in all of this. And my last message is this, people power has triumphed, but our work continues. And I must work with all of you to make this next step possible that our communities will lead in Sunset Park to bring real lasting opportunities to our city. Si se puede. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Menchaca. Parliamentarian, are there any additional members that wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Rivera. Time starts now. Thank you so much for the time. I wanted to uh, bring attention to something that I am Pat, that I'm introducing today. Good afternoon, almost eight years ago, Hurricane Sandy hit our city and left us without power south of 40th Street. Over eight feet of water entered Lower East Side homes and approximately 800 buildings were deemed damaged or destroyed around the city. We also lost lives. And yet in the aftermath of the storm, thousands of New Yorkers were left devastated by the realization that FEMA's eligibility rules excluded all common interest communities of which there are over half a million in New York. As someone who led disaster response in the LES before, during, and after Hurricane Sandy, I know we must do better to protect our communities from major storms. The resolution I, I am introducing, 1436, calls on Congress to pass the Disaster Assistance Equity Act to ensure that common interest communities, including co-ops and condominiums, are eligible for the same federal disaster assistance available to other single family homeowners. Due to their classification as business entities, cooperative and condominium associations are not currently eligible for grants to make costly repairs to common areas such as utility rooms, lobbies, and roofs. Many residents in my district in recent years have faced extreme and sometimes insurmountable costs to cover badly needed repairs, with many of these units a part of our Michelama program, which as you know is a real pathway for families to have equity in home ownership when those opportunities are so rare in low income and communities of color. Nearly eight years later, coastal residents still remain vulnerable to the next storm, which experts tell us is a matter of when, not if, it hits again. As our city navigates a global pandemic and the very real impacts of climate change, we must do everything we can to ensure all residents are supported in the event of future disasters. Thank you so much for the time. 
Thank you, Councilmember Rivera. Are there any other members parliamentarian? No, there are not. I just want to close with my own personal remembrances of Justice Ginsburg. Um, not only a fellow Brooklynite, RBG was a fellow working mom and played a pivotal role in making it possible for women such as myself and the women all throughout this caucus to be who we are today. I would like to thank her for her everlasting contributions. When we just think about the fact that she worked until the very last day, trying to hold on to make it past this election cycle, just to be able to continue to provide fairness and equality that every American is striving for. As a mother and elected official, I thank her for making it possible and so many other women to run for office. And for me while being pregnant uh, with my son. And any other woman who has ever signed a mortgage without a man or has a bank account without a male co-signer, we have the notorious RBG to think, thank for her ability to make independent financial decisions. When we think about all of the work that she's done, particularly with pay equity, we know that the Ledbetter versus Goodyear case, which paved the way for the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act of 2009, which gave women the ability to fight for gender pay, is really something that's so transformative that I hope in New York City, we continue to pick up that mantle and make it so that more women and minorities and people of color have the ability to fight for pay equity throughout this city and this nation. And as we continue to talk about the case as we're all pending around Breonna Taylor, we certainly know that one indictment is not enough. We must have an indictment of all the officers, all three involved in this very tragic and horrendous and despicable case um, on our country's uh, history. I just wanna add that when we think about these two women at the same time, it's important to remember, as I'm paraphrasing, Justice Ginsburg said, women belong in all places where decisions are made. And when we think about the fate of Breonna Taylor, I know that we want more women in the Supreme Court, in the House, in the Senate, in City Hall, in every place where women are, these are places where women should be making decisions. So as we continue to lift up Breonna Taylor, we have to continue to know that women, we have to fight to make sure that there are more of us in every single place where decisions are made, for the Breonna Taylors of the world, for the Jasmine Headleys, and so many women that we have met and have crossed our paths, we must continue to fight for them. And with that, I now turn it over to Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. Thank you for that, Madam Majority Leader. And I just wanna say that I agree with you on everything you said about Justice Ginsburg and also the fact that the news today on Breonna Taylor that one officer was being charged is not good enough. We need to make sure that anyone who was involved in the murder of Breonna Taylor uh, is brought to justice as well. And with that, the stated meeting of September 23rd, 2020 is hereby adjourned. Thank you.